Hello, this is Isaac Lundgren. Today I'm going to be doing a review of the UG2150 drawing graphics tablet slash pen monitor and also talking about the benefits of drawing on a screen versus um, drawing on a uh, drawing tablet that goes in your lap rather than the actual screen. What we have here is a fantastic um, competitor basically to the Wacom Cintiq 22HD pen monitor drawing tablet. Um, the UG2150 is, is an excellent competitor. It is a comparable screen size, um, 21.5 inches. It has um, full HD capacity. I was hoping at some point to get a tablet with an even uh, higher resolution display, but as I'm using this one, um, I actually like it just fine. It's been working out uh, fantastic for what I've been using it for so far. I've had it for a few weeks. I have not been able to use it daily, um, but I have um, used it quite a bit. I've used it to design um, this uh, scene for a game here. Um, also, I have um, seen review videos of other people who have used it for five months, six months, and it's still running fine, if that's any consolation to you, for the lack of length that I've been using it. Some of the complaints that people have had um, compared to the um, Wacom Cintiq is that it doesn't have any express keys on the sides. Now, first of all, I would like to quickly mention what a graphics tablet is. What that means is you can have your pen and you can use your tablet as an input drawing device. This is not a standalone computer. It's a monitor, basically a monitor that you plug into your computer that also acts as an input device. The pen has 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity. That means you can press down harder or softer and all the steps in between and it can recognize those nuances of uh, human hand and human expression as you use it in your artwork um, in the digital space. Now, I'll give you a little bit of background. I've been using um, drawing tablets like this. This particular one, uh, this company has recently gone out of business, which I was very disappointed about because I really uh, appreciated this last tablet. I've had it for uh, probably five or six years. Um, it has had a similar pen, and I was able to draw here and get my input on the screen. The only difference is, um, this is obviously does not have the screen. I would hold it in my lap and probably kind of work about like this or like this or get comfortable in some other way, which is a nice natural way to um, just keep your hand almost in a rest position. But there are some drawbacks. There isn't a direct correlation between what you draw in your lap and what you have on the screen. Usually what you're drawing on the drawing tablet ends up being much smaller and much larger on your screen so you're kind of there's some disconnect there and it'll take you a few tries before you get um, the particular line or shapes that you're attempting to draw at the time. Um, however, having the ability to draw on the screen it closes that gap and you are hand to screen getting exactly what you want which is fantastic. Um, let's take it for a little test spin so here I have uh, my uh, pen. It's a fantastic pen, by the way. It's got a good weight. It feels pretty solid. We've got a couple of programmable buttons here. I just leave them at the defaults, uh, which are um, left click and right click. Okay, so let's open um, Photoshop here. I'll bring in this artwork that I had on display here and let's say I wanted to do some work on the background here. Okay, I've got my pen tool here. Let's just do choose an obvious color so you can uh, see the strokes more fully. So I can come in here and change my brush size to make it smaller. Okay, we'll do a few test lines here. I can just kind of trace along the edge here. I mean, obviously I'm not going to keep these lines, but you can see my hand can just flow naturally along the screen here. There's no disconnect between hand and screen. Okay. Oh, 
that is in front. So move this all the way to the top layer here. Okay. All right. And I'll do some larger strokes here. So as you can see, the harder you press down, the larger the line becomes. The softer you press down, the smaller the line becomes. And you've got everything in between because of those uh, 2048 levels of pressure sensitivity. That is a standard, by the way. Most um, graphics tablets will have that. Um, Wacom, of course, is developing even more levels of sensitivity. But as you can see, um, you've got uh, of quite a bit here already to be able to mimic the human hand and the human expression in your work pretty well. So I'm pretty satisfied with those levels of pressure sensitivity already. Um, some people complain that, oh, this doesn't have my express keys that I'm totally used to. But because it doesn't have the express keys, it makes for a much smaller, um, it's taking up a lot less space than the giant Wacom Cintiqs because of their um, added padding for those express keys. So you've got plenty of room to just use your darn keyboard and mouse and you've got access to a bazillion express keys right down here and if you're um, handy in Photoshop or other graphics applications you can zoom um, I mean super easily I'm just changing my express keys here you've got um, your undo's as well um, you know that some people program into their express keys um, you can change brush size I'm doing this all from my keyboard um, lack of express keys is a non-issue to me. Um, let me show you uh, maybe a little bit of some color blending just so you can see, oh, does it do more than just regular line? So we'll come in here. I've got some red still. I'm going to turn down my flow. I'm just going to come in here with some soft color. I'm going to choose some colors as I go in here. I'll come in for a different brush. So as you can see, it's a fantastic artist tool for so for anyone who's actually never used a drawing tablet at all. Um, they are quite fantastic. Don't think of it as uh, you know your computer. It's not your computer. It plugs into your computer. Um, it's it's an add-on. It's something separate. And that's kind of where the problems um, come in when choosing your monitor. Because most of us, you know, maybe we've saved for a while to get a fantastic computer that we're happy with. You know, you spend thousands of dollars on your machine, you're not looking to spend another two to three thousand dollars on a graphics tablet. And that is where um, Ugi comes in, or Uji, however you pronounce it, I honestly don't know. Um, that's where Uji comes in. Uh, being able to have access to uh, some of this technology that allows you to draw on your screen um, that doesn't compromise quality um, and being able to do it in a price range uh, that you could actually probably fit into your budget um, and have your fantastic computer. The Uji sells for around um, $600 um, you can also find steals on it. I saw a Black Friday sale on Amazon, uh, or actually not bright Black Friday, it was uh, the Cyber Monday week. It was in the 400 range. Um, there is a Chinese company, GearVest, um, that I actually picked this one up in the $300 range. It was like $376. Um, I don't particularly recommend going with a company that you haven't worked with a lot before. I did take a risk there. Um, I ordered from GearVest.com. They had the best deal. It was three something. I just, I couldn't pass that up. I couldn't pass up saving hundreds of dollars. And it, it ended up coming. The tracking was a little, a little strange. The tracking number didn't really work. After the fact, it showed me where my product had been for the past two weeks, but I couldn't really check it each day and say, oh, it's in Singapore. Oh, it's in New York. Oh, it's in San Diego. Um, 
that was just delivered after the fact. So my quick little review for Gearbest, um, it worked out for me. Some people say that if you have to return an, uh, an item, you also have to pay customs, which uh, you probably don't want to do, but I didn't have any problems with mine. Um, one thing that people mention on this um, tablet is, um, well, number one, the glossy screen bothers them. Um, there, of course, there's going to be some reflection and a little bit of glare, but the screen is so bright that I honestly am not even bothered by glare or reflection. Now, if I tilted the monitor to catch some glare, you know, from my above light, it would probably be more intrusive, but at the current angle, it, uh, it doesn't bother me at all. Now, for smudges, um, as you can see, I've used this monitor for a bit. I've got, I mean, just a tiny bit of smudge. It has not obstructed my view at all. And honestly, just carry around a microfiber cloth in your office or your studio. Just do a quick wipe. Good as new. I mean, how easy is that, right? And while the screen is running, okay, I'm gonna use some smudges here. While the screen is running, you can't even see your smudges because the screen is so bright and beautiful, the smudges just disappear. Ta-da! Let's keep that microfiber handy, microfiber cloth handy. You'll be good to go. Uh, when it first came out of the box, it needed to be um, calibrated. The calibration was, um, the default was not very good. Um, calibrating is something you should be looking into, especially if you do a lot of graphic arts. You should have some kind of familiarity, familiarity with how to do that. Um, on a Mac, you come into your system preferences and displays, and you can work with your um, color in here. Calibrate your display through here. You've also got these menu buttons where you can uh, adjust it just based on sight. It's actually um, a pretty nice monitor um, as is. It's got a great viewing angle. It works great for Mac and PC. I'm currently using it on Mac. I just followed their little instruction packet. I read it all and it was uh, easy setup. Um, I loaded the drivers. The drivers came on a disc. You get two pens. Two pens. Um, the pens are rechargeable. I know uh, one benefit that Wacom has is that you don't even have a battery in here. You can just use it anytime. No battery change, no recharging necessary. But this is nice that you don't have to replace the battery. It, you can just plug it in. This plugs into any USB um, port and it charges your battery. While you're charging it, you can use the other one, or honestly, I have tested it out. You can plug this in, and while it's charging, you can still use the pen. It's a pretty long cord. It works out all right. Overall, who would I recommend this product to? Pretty much anybody looking to have the experience of drawing and painting on a beautiful drawing tablet but without having um, the expense of the Wacom Cintiq. I mean, if you've got the money to spend, obviously you go with the top brand, which is Wacom Cintiq. But even, I mean, if you took the costs away, comparing these side by side, they are very comparable. And this has some benefits, I mean, that I think are fantastic. Um, for example, I think the screen is beautiful. It's fairly thin. It doesn't take up a lot of desk space. They've got a um, easy way to uh, position your screen. There's a little lever that you pull. The screen can be put almost, uh, that is almost completely vertical. Uh, a lot of people like to draw almost completely horizontal, which you can do. Now you can draw this way if you want. Getting a little bit of lag here, but I think it's just the file size on this document. And also that I was showing so much on my screen.
one thing that this pen cannot do that the Wacom Cintiq can. The Wacom Cintiq knows if you're holding your pen like this, it knows if you're holding your pen like this, it knows if you're holding your pen like this, and certain brushes can be programmed to behave differently if you're holding your brush from the side or if you're holding your brush from a vertical position. It recognizes the tilt. Um, I noticed some reviewers were saying, oh, I can tilt my pen, it's fine. Well, that's not what that means. Um, what it means, what the tilt means, is that certain programs can recognize the tilt of your brush. Photoshop can, for example. Not every brush is tilt sensitive, but there are many that are. However, um, in the past, that was a deal breaker to me. Um, I got a tablet uh, with a tilt. My old uh, VT Muse Pro had tilt as well. I mean, obviously it's not a screen, but I was able to use the tilt. And fine, okay, it had some extra functionality. Uh, but the benefits of drawing on your screen and having not only the drawing experience, but having a good drawing experience on your screen and okay, no tilt, fine. That turned out not to be a deal, a deal breaker. I've used this for a short time and I'm already just like sold on this. Like I don't, I haven't even used my old tablet since I've just been using this. Um, one thing that I will mention as opposed to drawing um, in your lap or drawing on, a sc on the actual screen is your accuracy and your ability to kind of pump out those drawings is so much faster. You'll find you are doing a lot less um, undoing or going back in your history in the, um, in the program you're using. Uh, you're kind of getting what you, you're getting what you want the first time. I mean, for an example, if I tried to sign my name, if I tried to sign my name on my old tablet, I would have a lot of trouble. There's a lot of disconnect there. there I did a lot of erasing, going back, redrawing certain letters. If I sign my name on this tablet, first time exactly what I was expecting. It's just so much more accurate. You'll really appreciate being able to draw right on your screen and get exactly what you're looking for the first time. I mean, you could even use... You could use a straight edge right on this screen and get the straight lines you're looking for. I mean, you're getting a much more realistic drawing experience um, in the digital world, being able to draw on your monitor. A couple other complaints that some uh, people were having is that there's a little gap between where your pen touches the screen and the actual screen. I'll see if I can show that for you. Um, so if I look at the screen from the side, there is you can see there's going to be kind of a gap be where my pen touches the screen and where um, the where the cursor actually is. However, if you look at it from the front view, um, I mean, it's right on looking at it from this direction. Also, to take care of that because maybe you're not always going to be in the front, maybe you like to slouch or maybe for some reason you like to only draw at this angle but you wish it was lined up, they have a calibration tool that takes care of that. Calibration calibration. You've got these marks. Get in your ideal position. Touch your pen to the X. Done. So the angle that you're going to be viewing your screen at, you can say, okay, when I hold my cursor here, what I really mean is I want it to be here and it will um, make those adjustments so you won't even notice the gap. Uh, to me, non-issue. Besides, any tablet's going to have the gap. Maybe some are not quite as big as others. This, to me, is not a big gap. It's a small gap. Um, I just have nothing but good things to say about this. Well, that's why I'm taking time out of my day and schedule to do this review because I want this company to succeed because they're making a fantastic third-party competitor to the Wacom Cintiq that's just a fraction of the cost. I mean, if you can catch this 
on some kind of crazy sale in the 300s, you're basically paying the tax on what you would have spent on a Wacom Cintiq if you get one that's pushing the $3,000 range or $2,500 to the $3,000 range. You're paying the tax and you're getting one of these. Um, it's a fantastic product. It's a no-brainer if you're on a budget and you want the art experience of being able to draw and paint right on your screen. I highly recommend um, this product. Um, I, of course, recommend Amazon or any reputable um, sellers of the product. You can get it in the $600 range, probably uh, right around $600, maybe a little lower, maybe a little more. Um, if you're feeling bold and risky, you can check and see if it's still on sale at GearBest. Don't expect a good tracking number, um, but my product came. Everything was fine, so I can say, okay, if you wanted someone to be bold and try it before you, that was me. I tried that. I got a fantastic deal. You might want to try it. If you're feeling like, okay, I'm going to pay the 600 to feel a little more safe, go with Amazon, go with B&H Photo or some other reputable place. I highly recommend the UG2150 graphics tablet. Obviously, I would recommend a Cintiq as well, but I think this is a great competitor. And for me, where cost is important, I'm a teacher during the day, I don't have the budget to just fill my life with Cintiq 22 HDs, so um, I go with this competitor, and I have absolutely no complaints, no legitimate complaints about it. It has been a great product for me so far. If you have any more specific questions about the... Um, Wacom Cintiq or about any of my processes or anything like that, feel free to ask them below in the comment section. And if you're feeling up to it, go ahead and give the video a like or subscribe to my channel. You know the drill. If you appreciate the videos, you know what to do. Hope you're having a great day and I hope you're making some awesome art. Talk to you later.